I'm Mikey Sklar. I live in southern New Mexico and design custom electronics. Today I'm working on a control system that will be used for monitoring and controlling the growth of algae. So this circuit board I've designed is two-sided and pretty complicated. It would also be expensive to send off and have it printed just for a single test board. So what I'm doing today is I took out my small CNC mill. This is a 7 inch by 7 inch CNC mill and I have a little piece of copper board here. It's two-sided, six inch by six inch, so the mill can handle it. And there are, we're going to use this entire board for our circuit. So the first step is to tape down the board. Okay, now our board is taped down. Now the point of this is just to tape it so that we can drill our reference pins, which will hold the board more securely and allow us to flip the board halfway through this process and etch the other side. This is a number 57 bit, which uh, comes to about 42 mil diameter, and that's just the right size for these little pins I'm going to use. These are some sort of... Uh, I don't know, office style pin. The next step is to manually position the mill at zero, zero for our axis. So I'm going to use the bottom most corner of the circuit board for zero, zero. Okay, we're just about at zero, zero now. I'm just getting to the very tip of this board. And the z-axis, what I do is I just drop the bit, let it lock in, and go ahead and lower the chuck just a bit, and then tighten it up manually. So, this is EMC2 on my Linux box, and all I need to do is tell it that we have our X at home, our Y is at home, 0, 0, unless these values are changing, and our Z is at home. Great. Drill is on. And let's run our reference points. That is four reference points that we have in now. We can stop the drill and pull the table forward. And what we're going to do is go ahead and remove the tape and put our pins in. I'm going to drop each one of these pins in. There's one, two, three. All right. The first thing you want to do after the reference points are in is take out the drill bit we had used to drill the reference points and put in the drill bit that we're going to be using for the circuit board uh, pins for all the components that are going to be through hole. Now we will have to rehome the z-axis from the center of the board. So what I'm doing is on the software side we're already at the three alignment but I need to get there on the y-axis too. So I'm just get both of these around three so we're at roughly at the center of the board which is a nice place to be. See here, it's about center, so we're going to go ahead and lower and get our Z axis centered. Okay. And here's the trick right when you get very close, you open up the chuck, let the bit drop to the top of the board, and then just shrink it up yourself manually. Tighten that up. Home the Z. In software. All right, now we are completely aligned. Okay, time for the fun part. We're going to drill a bunch of holes really fast. Alright, good news. We have finished drilling our board and the holes look great. Let's go ahead and take a look. 
Uh huh. So you can see, nice, even, probably about 300 holes here. Now the next step is to change out this bit that we use to drill for our pins and put in another carving bit. And we're going to do the same old trip trick where we drop the bit right at the bottom here. Let's do a little plop. Tighten up the chuck, hit the home button on the Z axis, which we have done. Go ahead and lift up the chuck and tighten her up. Great, now we have our carving bit. V-shaped carving bit, 0.1 millimeter diameter. Okay, this file is the bottom of our circuit board. This is what it looks like in EMC2, and this is before we have carved anything. And it is ready to go. So See, we have some very clean traces here. I've done a quick conductivity test to make sure we didn't have any sort of uh, shorts and it tested cleanly. So, looks like we got a good board. Okay, board's down. And pin number four. Great. So we got most of our alignment here. What I want to make sure of is that this board is all the way pushed towards the left here. That there's no movement in that direction. But it can shift back. Yeah. Like this. So got my little hammer. Now we are ready to load the front of the circuit board file. All right, we just finished up the first pass. You can see the top left corner didn't etch completely, but the rest of the board really did cut pretty well. So I might just do another pass and really focus on that top area. Here it is. I have completed the circuit board. Pretty nice, huh? And everything lines up good enough. Could have been a little better with some of the drill holes, but it's there. And so here he is, a six inch by six inch double-sided board. This would be really expensive to run off just for a single one, probably a hundred to two hundred dollars for this board.